still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? A survivor. And all clouded by conscience, remorse, or delusions of morality. Perfect organism. Created by Philip Kennedy Johnson, The Woman in the Dark was introduced in Alien Bloodlines, first of Marvel's Alien series, and had a much more significant presence in Alien Icarus, the third Marvel series, and Philip Kennedy Johnson's final. The Woman in the Dark is first mentioned by ex Wayland yutani corporate security member Gabriel Cruz at the very beginning of Alien Bloodlines, who describes a recurring nightmare he has in which he dreams of pure darkness, a dark, a truer shade than just the absence of light. In the dark, he dreams of the aliens and of her, the woman in the dark. She's with them. Her eyes are blind, cloudy and still. Her breasts unburdened by breath or heartbeat. I'm utterly beneath her notice. In all the universe, she's a queen among lepers, a goddess among maggots. But yet, I know she has noticed me. She's looking for me. And even though she's the nearest thing to true evil that exists, the thing that will someday reduce all life to gore and ash. I know that some part of me wants to be found. Cruz was the commanding officer of a team of Whalen yutani security forces that had been sent to investigate the colony transport vessel Hadley Carrier 2 in 2180. Aboard the ship, they found aliens, and the team was captured and implanted. The last to be captured and face hugged, Cruz was rescued by the unit's bishop and placed inside a cryotube. He was eventually rescued and the gestating chestburster removed. Known as the Alpha, this chestburster served as a foundation for Whalen yutanis alien research aboard Epsilon Station. Throughout Alien Bloodlines, the woman in the dark was depicted as something that humans who had been face hugged witnessed during the implantation process, and frequently after in nightmares if the infant chestburster was removed and the host survived. When a failed attempt by the anti-corporation terrorist group known as the Minute Hand Movement to steal corporate secrets from Epsilon Station in 2200 resulted in the escape of alien specimens, Gabriel Cruz and a small security force were sent to the station to retrieve the sample and to rescue his son Danny, who was amongst the terrorists. Cruz encountered Mitch, a former colleague and scientist who had been face-hugged and whose chestburster was still gestating inside him when he was found. Mitch told Cruz that, I saw her Gabe, she's looking for you, the one in the dark. Gabriel Cruz eventually located his son Danny in the alien hive, who was in the midst of the implantation process, a face hugger still attached to his face. At the end of Alien Bloodlines, another bishop android was able to remove the still gestating and immature chestburster from within Danny. Surviving the process, Bishop asked Danny about the experience, and just as his father did, Danny Cruz reported that he saw something in the dark, something that was pursuing him. I just remember the smell, this horrible, ungodly stink. There was something in the dark, I think, something looking for me, something far, far away. While not prominently featured in the first storyline, Alien Bloodlines does seem to lean heavily into the idea that the woman in the dark mentally torments hosts who survived the implantation process, suggesting a lasting connection with the Xenomorph XX121 hive mind in which they remained haunted by her. Iris Humphreys, an artificial person who was leading the invading Minute Hand movement team, claimed to have knowledge and awareness of the woman in the dark that the facehugged victims were dreaming of. You still don't understand what she is, do you? Humans weren't the first organics to leave your solar system, Cruz. There have been so many others in this galaxy alone, and they're all gone now. Do you know why? When organic species grow arrogant enough to travel the stars, they find it waiting. Prometheus's cleansing fire, the fire that keeps the universe clean of parasites like you. It's always the same after that. First you tried to harness the fire as a weapon, like all the ones before you have done. Next, you'll try to join with it, use it to make yourself better, stronger. That's what the Hive showed you in the Dark Cruise. 
She's your own future, the inevitable end result of the deadly little thing you brought back inside you. The thing we'll eventually use to kill you all. It would take another 17 years before the first recorded encounter with a creature resembling the woman in the dark on the planet Tobler 9 in 2217 in Alien Icarus. At one point considered a jewel in the crown of Weyland yutani's colonisation effort, Tobler 9 was the research and development hub of the company. An alien outbreak in 2205 caused the planet to be abandoned and was subsequently left an irradiated wasteland presumably due to bombing by Wayland yutani According to Melody, a former R&D researcher who survived the outbreak, Wayland yutani had been selectively breeding aliens to develop a new variation of Xenomorph that the researchers referred to as the Icarus strain. The company was exploring more human applications, ways we could use them to make us better. We started breeding the aliens like you might breed dogs, carefully selecting hosts based on prerequisite strengths and immunities. It worked. Overmorphs from the Icarus strain gave us material we could use to develop new drugs and gene therapies, not just for soldiers, but for all humanity. Melody noted that the xenomorph born of the Icarus strain demonstrated a higher than typical intelligence and even appeared to demonstrate enjoyment from their own cruel behaviour. There's too much of us in them. If they were beasts before they're proper monsters now, they seem a shade cleverer now, more patient, cruel, even sadistic in a way other beasts aren't capable of. When they take one of us, sometimes they leave parts for us to find. A shoe, child's toy, snarl a hair. It feels like they're trying to lure in the rest of us, Maybe even having a laugh. Simple beasts don't do such a thing, do they? They kill to eat or protect their young. The right to mate, maybe. Never for a laugh. The Wayland yutani scientists had been able to successfully develop a sophisticated biologic agent using the Icarus strain of the aliens. A biologic agent that acted as an incredible broad spectrum miracle drug. One of Weyland yutanis off the book's records was some catch-all biologic for their defence agents. One injection with a wide range of benefits. One of those benefits was significant resistance to deadly radiation levels. A team of combat synthetics known as Steel Team was deployed to Tobler 9 to retrieve this biologic agent, following the catastrophic failure of an experimental nuclear reactor on the agricultural world of Demeter 2 a world with the agricultural infrastructure to feed 25 United Systems colonies, the radiation fallout threatened to kill millions of colonists on Demeter II. Without the capability to evacuate a population of this size, the United Systems government and military decided to attempt to retrieve this biologic agent to inoculate the radiation afflicted colonists instead. When Steel Team arrived at the Wayland yutani laboratory, they found no sign of the biologic agent or the alien egg that had been instrumental in its development. Instead, they found a menagerie of terrestrial insects that had been mutated unbeknownst to the combat synthetics. Alien Icarus itself offers no definitive explanation, but given that Steel Team also discovered urns of accelerant in the same lab, it's a safe assumption that these insects had been mutated by exposure to the black goo. As the combat synths had been expecting to find no living beings other than the Xenomorph XX121, the team retrieved a small number of the insects. The assumption that there would be no human survivors on Tobler 9 was also corrected shortly after, when Steel Team was rescued from attacking aliens by several ragged looking humans who took the synthetics back to their refuge. Here, they found many survivors of the alien infestation many humans who should have been dead due to radiation poisoning. Despite the initial insistence that none of the survivors had taken the biologic agent that Steel Team had come to Tobler 9 to retrieve, it was later discovered that all the surviving humans received regular inoculations of the biologic that kept them healthy and alive. One such survivor was named Lee. Elijah, one of the members of Steel Team, 
discovered Lee going through their belongings, which included the accelerant mutated insects the synthetic team had discovered at Whalen Utani's lab. Unnoticed by Lee, one of the containers had broken and a mutated insect had escaped into her clothing. However, Elijah did notice, but neglected to tell the human survivor due to his general disdain and distrust of mankind. Two days later, following the survivor's betrayal of Steel Team, which saw Melody trap the synthetics in an alien hive within High Point Rail Station, the location of one of the worst bloodbaths of the outbreak, the humans had retreated to Steel Team's dropship. Over the day, Lee had been getting progressively ill. She began to vomit a black substance, and her skin started to deform. Aboard the dropship, Lee lost her last traces of humanity and attacked the other human survivors. By this point, she had developed her own telescoping tongue, attacking Melody with it and removing the woman's jaw in the attack. The dropship crashed during her attack, and Lee was the only being that emerged from the flaming wreckage. With her mutation still progressing, Lee came face to face with a number of aliens who didn't attack her. Instead, Lee led the aliens to the bunker where the last of the surviving humans on Tobler 9 were hiding. Lee and the aliens devastated the survivors. Steel Team arrived at the human refuge in time to save only a single hiding child. They fought and killed numerous aliens, as well as fending off the viciously attacking Lee. One of the dying humans armed and detonated a nuclear failsafe, wiping out their shelter and the attacking xenomorphs. However, the remaining members of Steel Team, their human survivor and Lee, were able to escape in time. Following the nuclear detonation and the survivor's lack of radiation illness, Steel Team deduced that the survivors had been inoculating themselves with the biologic agent and it had been effectively protecting them from the radiation poisoning all this time. After the mutating Lee watched the surviving members of Steel Team retreat, she returned to the alien hive in High Point Rail Station, where she opened the doors that the human scavengers had closed earlier to trap Steel Team, freeing the xenomorphs to attack the remaining synthetics. As the last two members of Steel Team and the final surviving human headed to the incoming dropship for evacuation, the dropship crew mistook Lee to be the lone survivor of the mission and approached her. Steel Team arrived just in time to watch Lee slaughter the last of the crew. Lee's attention turned to the survivors, but was held off by Elijah's pulse rifle fire. As her mutation continued, causing Lee pain and distracting her, the survivors were able to escape into the dropship and leave the planet's surface, leaving the still mutating Lee on Tobler 9. As Steel Team considered what to do with the surviving human, the biologic agent coursing through his veins. On the surface of Tobler 9, Lee found refuge with the now queenless hive under High Point Rail Station. Alien Icarus ends with a full page panel of Lee, surrounded by aliens, and now much further along in her mutation, with a much closer resemblance to the woman in the dark, as seen in Gabriel Cruz's visions. This is the last we've seen of the woman in the dark, or Lee. Though Alien Icarus offers no definitive reason, or even a theory, it would be a reasonable conclusion to suppose that due to the xenomorph-derived biologic agent within Lee's system, the accelerant reacted differently to the other mutations we've seen so far. Lee's mutation time was also much slower when compared to the mutations we saw during the Prometheus expedition and when the Covenant crew landed on Paradise. Lee's mutation took over two days from the initial time of infection, which is assuming the insect bit her relatively quickly, of course. Perhaps it's possible that the alien hive mind is capable of seeing into the future? Was Cruz being shown Lee before her mutation even occurred? Or perhaps what Cruz was seeing was a similarly mutated creature resulting from other extraterrestrials races' own experimentation with the Xenomorph XX-121 and the Accelerant? Hello everybody, this is Corporal Hicks, aka Aaron Percival, and if you made it this far into the video, thank you. This is an interesting one, I think. Uh, it tends to cause a bit of 
discussion between uh, the AVP Galaxy staff actually and then that is how much species do you like in your alien you know how much how appropriate is this humanoid Giger-esque figure in the alien universe uh, Adam tends to not like this one but I actually come down on the side that very much likes a bit of sill in my alien so you know ever since we first saw the teasers of uh, the woman in the dark I was very curious to see uh, what Marvel was going to do with it and in general I like the concept you know in my mind sill is an engineer weapon that the engineers or space jockeys or, or whatever broadcast into space to uh, let other species uh, sort of destroy themselves and I think it plays nicely into some of the other concepts of the space jockeys being obsessed with reproduction um, I think there's a few bits of lore that say they can't reproduce sexually anymore I think uh, Aliens Original Sin you know the first of the DH Press novels does something similar that's why they're obsessed with the aliens and if I remember rightly some of John Spate's early um, sort of bible for Prometheus had a similar thing with the engineers where they could no longer produce sexually so yeah I, I find it very fitting and I like that sort of thing in, in Alien I think it works but um, what what about you you folk out there how much uh, how much sill do you like in your Alien anyway um, thank you again for watching especially if you made it this far in um, a thank you to all our Patreon supporters as well who have been helping get our podcast uh, made more regularly this year. Um, last year I was only managing about one a month, this year we're already on two a month and it's still going nicely. Um, at the end of the video will be uh, a list of all the Patrons who are currently supporting us and the tiers that they're at. I'm currently working on the third, the edit of the third podcast um, for Patreon. Uh, exclusively for Patreon supporters which is genetic memory and in this one we're talking without warning which was Kevin Peter Hall's film before Predator in which he played surprisingly an alien hunter <laughs> so uh, very uh, related to Predator um, we've got a good couple of things coming up as well once this video is up and done I've already written the next one which is another uh, a very unknown piece of alien history you know a concept that was dropped very early on in a draft that's not out there and one I'm quite looking forward to I've already had Declan um, Declan Loftus whip up a piece uh, to go along with this one as the cover cover image for this next video and I've got plenty more ideas coming up uh, we've got some more interviews booked up for the podcast as well so uh, they'll be being recorded and dropped soon as of recording I'm waiting for a interview back from our editor with Bryson and uh, Netho Diaz who worked on the last Predator comic so plenty of stuff in the pipeline plenty of stuff coming up and uh, we're working away hard at it as always you can find the hub of our activity on avpgalaxy.net we're on all the major socials Twitter Facebook Instagram threads obviously YouTube since you're here and if you enjoy what we're doing on YouTube if you've enjoyed this video or any of our other ones you know please do share them around in your uh, nerd circles um, if you think that's something they'll be interested in we very much appreciate uh, that sort of love and uh, if this is your first time here if this video brought you to the channel please head back to the page check out some of our other law pieces check out some of our editorials and uh, our game streams you know we stream every week uh, we've actually managed that this year uh, so everything's uh, everything's doing well well this has been corporal hicks and thank you for watching <laughs>